Alright, so we've got the first three down. Go on to another really cool one. I like this guy a lot. Protector of the Jungle. Mm. I know. Well, I mean, I guess technically he's cutting down robot trees. He's, he's just a lumberjack. He's just... Why are you trying to justify all these Because abilities? they're not trying to justify it. <laughs> he's just a blue-collar worker trying to earn his keep. It's mostly just like, we have limited budget and capabilities, let's animate them doing cool stuff. They do that. To kind of show off like their attack style and things like that. But yeah, so this, I think, is the, the quintessential boring stage, in my opinion. Like, there is... A lot of long, straight expanses of like nothing going on. I love the background. Yeah, that background is fantastic. Like the the yeah. artwork in it is fine. It's just oh god, like mechanically, it's such a boring level. Oh, I never really explained that. I've got an upward air dash now, uh, thanks to these boots, which I haven't really used more than like three times. Uh, but it definitely helps with a lot of the specific jumping puzzle, or not really puzzles, but like jumping maneuvers that you get, mm. especially in some of the fortress stages. Um, it doesn't respond super well in the original, because um, I think you can double tap to do it when you're in the air, and there's kind of a long pause where he like charges up, and you can see it like in the animation that he's kind of like readying up to do it, which makes sense because going straight up is different than going forward. Um, but do you also have the regular air dash? Yeah. So you still dash left and right, and if you're holding up when you do the dash, you do the upward one. Mm -hmm. So it gets really cool. And then there's. Um, something later on for the full completion run that's just like, holy shit, this is so broken. Well, I really like the background on this stage, but at the same time, it's really plain. Like, right here, all you're really getting is peach. a solid peach. Peach, peach color. Um, like, it feels like they're stretching it over a much bigger area than the other stages. Yeah, and there's like do. less parallaxing and stuff going on. Which, you know, it's not the biggest deal. The detail that is there is pretty cool. Like, I love seeing the fences out in the background. You can tell it's some kind of, like, mechanical forest preserve. Yeah, so this is a contender for one of my favorite busters. And the only reason it falls short is because under certain situations, its own complexity kind of breaks it. Mm. But it does uh, an overlapping chart shot, which just got demoed there. And that is, like enormously powerful. Like, even those smaller side shots, or, um, you know, upper and lower shots, yeah. will do, I think, more than a standard shark shot, and then that center one will just, like, plow through stuff. Um, mechanically, it's neat. I think the uh, double charge in X2 works similarly. Mm -hmm. If you're on a ladder, since he's using both hands pretty much at the same time, he'll actually let go of the ladder. Um, so you kind of need to know what's going on with that. Um, it'll also pierce through terrain pretty well. So that widespread really helps out with fights, like Worm Seeker are here. At the same time, though, because of the wind-up for it, there's a delay before it goes out because you hit one, and then when you time it, the second charge shot hits the first, and that's when they combine and go out. So it's really powerful. You just need to kind of learn how to use it. Mm. And that's kind of where it starts to get annoying, where it's like, this is really cool, and I respect it, and it's very clearly powerful. Yeah. That didn't take long at all. Eh. But it's only because I like learned how to use it as opposed to the X2 double buster, where it's just like you can just like go for it and it like does just a shit ton of damage and there's like no concerns about how you're using it, it just works right. I was noticing a lot of sprite flickering in that fight, which I don't expect from an SN Heaters. Um that might have just been like the frame rate capture. No, it was like there's too many sprites on this layer, so we're disabling, like, a small square of him, and even during the explosions, it's like, okay, some of these explosions, we're just not going to render all of them. Yeah, that is very possible. Like, you see that all the time in NES games and on the Game Boy, but yeah. I don't really see that very often on the SNES. Yeah. I mean, they did push a lot of limits with these ones, which is really cool. Also, those enemies back there, called Hama Hama, which I love, I love some of the naming convention in these. Um, they're tricky. In that, like, you obviously don't want to get too close to them because mm -hmm. they, you know, do the strong melee attacks. Um, but the ball and chains are invulnerable to damage. They'll block your shots, including when they're retracted inside. So if you do a full charge shot at them at the same level as them, like if you're both on a flat surface, the charge shot will hit the ball and chain component mm -hmm. before the actual damageable body. So you need to hit them with the mid-charge shots 
uh, standard shots or hit them with charge shots while you're dashing forward, mm. which makes them kind of an interesting enemy to approach. Or you can go above them uh, and get around them because they can't turn around. They're basically stationary melee cannons, which, I don't know, I've always thought that was really neat. So, were those small spikes like instant kill or just No, they're damage? it's it's basically damaged terrain, mm. more or less. So, I don't think they do a lot, it's more just something that can stack up if you're not paying attention. What's this dude's name? Neon Tiger. What's his title? Uh, I said it in the beginning, and you. Oh yes, it. Protector of the Forest. Honestly, a lot of these titles that sound kind of positive could also be their titles pre mafricking mm-hmm. I'd be willing to believe that. So I take a lot of unnecessary damage in this version of this fight, despite the fact that he has a really easy pattern. Uh, when he's using Ray Splasher from his tail like that, he always goes up, down, forward every time. So as long as you don't jump until that third one, you basically don't take any damage. I'm an idiot, and I constantly jump into that first one. So that's really just me being bad. He seems like be. kind of a pain without his weakness weapon. His weakness weapon is actually pretty mechanically complicated, too. Um, and I don't end up using it in the refight because I'm using the 102% damage thing. Um, you want to get him on the wall like that. Uh, the charge shot overlap delay actually helps out in this fight because the way he does that block maneuver is um, he'll basically analyze when you're initiating the shot and not when he's going to be taking damage by it. And I think I actually pulled it off a couple times in this, so you might see it at some point. This is the explanation for it: is you shoot it and then he blocks, but then there's the delay that happens while the charge shots overlap, so he drops his guard right as it would impact him, so you're actually getting full charge shot damage off on him, which is really difficult to do safely unless you're using that upgrade. Nice. Um, which kind of makes this order important, because if you don't have Tornado Fang from mm-hmm. uh, Tunnel Rhino going into this, you can't get that buster, and it makes it a lot harder to fight him. In this instance, I'm able to go at him with a pretty good set of gear without his weakness weapon, so he kind of breaks order that way, which I honestly think is pretty cool. Thanks. There's a lot of fun stuff you can do in this one, especially if you're just using the buster as your main source of damage. Yeah, I really like X3, it's just the levels, and music yeah. more than anything. Because honestly, I think most of the bosses are pretty cool, too. Yeah, they do I a lot like of the things. boss roster in this one. For the most part. Yeah, it's not my favorite one, but it's still a lot of fun. There's a couple of outliers, but for the most part, it's pretty good. Yeah. There's no wire sponges. This dude, though, Gravity Beetle... See, he's just hanging out. No. Just, you know, just chillaxing. It's cool. (laughs) Then he destroys an entire... Okay, maybe a little (laughs) nice... But yeah, Gravity Beetle is outright one of my favorite boss designs in the series, even though he didn't have colored and eyes in that one frame of animation. Steel Revenger. <laughs> Gravity Beetle. So he's cool. He's in a an arms shipping depot, basically. Or, well, no. So, I always get these stages confused. Um, X3 has a couple things that happen similarly to the stage interaction in X1, mm-hmm. where like you beat Chill Penguin and then the Lava and Flame Man right. the stage. Which uh, X2 didn't them. have. X2 doesn't do that, um, but it also covers some other stuff. It introduces you know, the Ryan Chaser, yeah. some more dynamic stage elements and stuff, and this one kind of combines all of that, which is really cool. Um, but basically, if you do this stage before Blast Hornet, which I'm doing right now, um, it has all kinds of shipping crates and stuff ready to mobilize. So this is kind of where I'm assuming troops are going to mobilize from. And pretty soon I end up on a giant vehicle, which I'm pretty sure is right here. Uh, you can tell because the background is moving. Initially you think that it might just be like you're on a big rotating platform until you realize that that's just not like physically possible. So you boarded a vehicle. Gravity Beetle is about to lay siege to something. Um, and Blast Hornet is more or less an arms dealer or, like, the arms warehouse or something. So if you beat his level and then come back here or do it in that order, um, which you won't do because I'm getting his weakness weapon from this level, so it's kind of a catch-22 sort of thing, um, all of the ammo crates and everything will be gone and you can navigate the stage slightly differently and that also opens up a heart tank and stuff like that. Um, One cool thing that comes out of that which you'll definitely see up until the fortress stages, is these guys right here. Perfect mm-hmm. timing. Thank you, me and game. Uh, those missile launcher guys 
will be outright replaced by a sub-variant of that enemy once you uh, beat Blast Hornet and there's nobody like shipping out the heavier War Machine related stuff. So rather than having the arc fire mortar things and the homing missiles, it'll only be able to fire straight fire missiles. That's um, really cool. Yeah, the sprite is outright different. It's basically just the feet and the head portion. There's no weapons on the back, and it's green instead of red. So you're basically like cutting off a supply line, which I think is really, really rad. But the background palette isn't very... Like, it's a lot of the same shades, but I guess that makes sense since... As we'll see in a little bit, there's open windows where you can see the parallax background, and it's yeah, more, very contrasting. Yeah, I'm willing to give it a pass on this one. A, because I'm biased, and this is one of my more enjoyed stages and boss fights in this one. But, like, right here, is yeah. like you get all those other colors of, okay, that's where all those colors were. Yeah, I it, got it's it. really cool. Um, but B, also, you're kind of in the interior of of a massive vehicle sort of thing. Yeah, but it's also, like, there's missiles and shit in the background that are the exact same colors yeah. as the walls. It's all just that drab military green, which, I don't know, I don't mind it. I know what you're t- uh, saying. I'd rather have it be a little bit more... Vibrant? Yeah, more of the time, like yeah. it was in some other stages. So, unfortunately, the way I fight him, uh, I'm not going to show off some of the cooler stuff he does, because I'm using his weakness weapon to kind of stun lock him. Um... But Gravity Beetle does a couple really cool things. He'll fire two projectiles, one diagonally up and one forward, and they'll ricochet around the room. And as he charges them, or as they travel, I forget which, they gather power and get bigger and stronger, and getting hit by them is really scary. And he's also jumping really low right now. So his desperation move is he'll initiate a giant black hole that takes up pretty much the upper half of the screen. Um, And I don't know how much damage it does, because I've never touched it. Um at a high enough health for it to not like, well, that might not have been an instant kill because I was at like one fourth damage mm-hmm. or whatever. Uh, but it changes the mechanics of the fight. So he'll be able to jump higher and farther at you. And when he does a dash forward, which you don't see in that phase either, he'll grind up the ground. And rather than all of the ground parts falling back to the ground, they all get sucked up like a contra, like a rooster tail going up into the black That's hole. That's really cool. It is really neat. And Gravity Well is a really fun weapon mechanically, too, that we'll cover in just a little bit, hopefully. Look forward to that. Yeah. 